Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Celeste, thanks for joining me today. Do you enjoy a great short story? I certainly do. In fact, I love short stories, poems, essays, um, all kinds of short form writing. And for three and a half years, I was actually the creator and moderator of a group on Facebook, which studied short form literature. Uh, we had some really lively book club discussions and we basically would read anything from a poem all the way up to a novella. The only thing that we did not read were full-length novels. So um, that was called The Wonderlings, and a wonderling is any short gem of literature, um, a jaw-droppingly gorgeous essay, a beautiful poem, a poignant short story that illustrates some truth about life, and um, we really had a wonderful time during our years in The Wonderlings. Um, and I hope in future weeks to start discussing more short form literature with you and um, doing some pairings of my favorite short stories, essays, and so forth. But for today, I just wanted to start out with a little bit of a personal celebration of the short story writer Catherine Mansfield. And um, Catherine Mansfield has always been a favorite author of mine. In fact, my first introduction to Catherine Mansfield was through this book here, which is one of my high school textbooks. I've kept it all these years. And um, this included the short story, The Garden Party, which is of course her classic short story of coming of age or Bildung's Roman. And I've held on to this ever since. And the thing that I loved about um, The Garden Party is that it opened me up to the idea that perhaps I could be a short story writer as well. And of course, this year is particularly a good one for studying Catherine Mansfield because it's the centenary of her death. And um, she died at quite a young age. I believe she was 34 when she passed of tuberculosis and other maladies that she lived with throughout her life. So it was a short and uh, rather tragic in some ways life, but at the same time during her brief existence, she uh, eked out such a wonderful oof of short stories and journals and letters for us to enjoy today. And so um, I just wanted to share a couple of my short story anthologies that include works by Catherine Mansfield and then do a little sort of mini countdown. Um, if you're looking for a great place to start with Catherine Mansfield in terms of her short story, like a Catherine Mansfield 101, I'm going to give you five short stories that you could begin with. The two books that I wanted to recommend first though, um, this is Vintage Classics Stories by Catherine Mansfield. It's an interesting cover illustration there. And um, so this is with an introduction by Jeffrey Myers and it contains a really good selection of uh, Mansfield's stories. Okay, and the other one that I've been enjoying recently is The Montana Stories. This is published by Persephone Books. And this is a lovely edition, of course, from Persephone. It's number 25. And um, this particular group of short stories were written in 1921, circa 1921. Uh, Mansfield was seriously ill with tuberculosis at that time. She was age 32, and she came to live at Montana, the Chalet de Sapin, which looks south down to Sierra and across the valley to the snow peak caps beyond. And um, most of her really famous stories are included in this. Um, it was sort of a fever output of genius creation during her final years. Um, look at the gorgeous end papers in this as well. And um, yeah, so of the five short stories that I'm going to recommend that you start with, if you're new to Catherine Mansfield, um, I believe 
four of them, if not all five are included in this book. Um, there may be one that is not in that book and you can find the other story in this collection here. But the good news is that all of the short stories are available online and I will include links to those in the um, description box below. And as well, I'll include uh, links to some major Catherine Mansfield websites, including the Catherine Mansfield House website and the Catherine Mansfield, I think it's the Society. Um, and they have all of her short stories available as PDFs on the website. In addition to that, there are some excellent readings of her short works on Audible and even right here on YouTube for free. So check those out as well. Okay, so you're brand new to reading Catherine Mansfield. Where's a great place for you to begin? Well, here are some of my suggestions. And you know, I love all of these short stories, so it's really hard to put them in any sort of critical order. But I'm going to start with a kind of well-known basic short story and then move slowly up to number one, which is my own personal favorite Catherine Mansfield short story. So number five is the Fly. The Fly is a short story which is often anthologized in collections of short stories about the Great War. And there's a character called Mr. Woodfield and he's visiting his friend who is only referred to in the story as the boss. And they're sitting in the boss's office one day and um, chatting and visiting. And uh, Mr. Woodfield says that his uh, family members have recently gone to Belgium to visit the graves of both of their sons. Um, so Mr. Woodfield's son and the boss's son who have both died in the Great War. And this is clearly making um, the boss uncomfortable to hear about this. And uh, Mr. Woodfield sort of goes on and on and talks about how the graves are so well maintained, etc., etc. Finally gets up and leaves. And the rest of the short story kind of deals with how the boss handles the traumatic memory of his son's passing. And the story is just brilliant. I highly recommend it. It's quite short and it deals with themes of uh, war, grief, loss, friendship, and also um, how we see ourselves as such um, pacifists and loving people and yet also have the capacity for cruelty in different degrees. At number four, another great short story to read by Catherine Mansfield is called Miss Brill. And this is actually another short story that I read when I was in high school. And Miss Brill is an English teacher and she lives near some public gardens and it's a beautiful day and she decides to go out to the public gardens and listen to a band. She puts on her fur and is admiring her fur Miss Brill is sort of making her way to the bandstand and you get this sort of internal monologue about how she's um, viewing all of the people around her and um, just enjoying herself tremendously and thinking of how wonderful life is. And then she sits down and a younger couple sit down nearby. So Miss Brill is an interesting study in um, how we think about others and they think about us and um, how a kind or unkind word can really change the trajectory of your day. So that's another one I recommend, Miss Brill. Next on the list of stories that I would recommend if you're new to Catherine Mansfield is at number three, A Cup of Tea. A Cup of Tea is a fantastic short story and um, this one is uh, again a very simple story of a woman called Rosemary. Rosemary is quite well to do. Um, she has a lot of money um, to spend at her disposal. She's married, she lives in a nice section of town and so forth. She goes out one day and she's shopping. She runs into a um, really wretchedly poor um, woman called Miss Smith and Miss Smith is begging and she asks her enough money for a cup of tea. 
And instead of giving her the money for the cup of tea, Rosemary decides to sort of adopt her and bring her home and said, why don't you come back to my place for a cup of tea? And this makes Miss Smith uncomfortable, but she acquiesces after a while. So they go back to Rosemary's uh, beautiful house in this tiny little space of the prose. It perfectly describes uh, jealousy over something. You can have all the money in the world, but money can't buy everything, and um, including um, someone's love or attention. Um, but it's a really interesting little study in jealousy and what money can and can't buy. So at number three, I recommend a cup of tea. At number two of stories to read by Katherine Mansfield, I highly recommend The Doll's House. The Doll's House um, is a story of particular interest to me because in other videos I've shared my love of miniatures and doll houses as a hobby. And um, so this is uh, really interesting because it provides another way to sort of view miniatures and the house as a symbol of so many things in society. And um, this story is about the Burnell children. There's three sisters and their names are Kezia, Isabel, and Lottie. And they acquire a doll's house from a relative and it's just a gorgeous doll house. And um, they attend a school which is kind of mixed in terms of social classes. It's supposedly a sort of melting pot of um, children from all different classes and they're uh, sort of bragging about their dollhouse and um, inviting children to see the dollhouse from the school. Um, well there is another family of children who are quite um, poor and they're the Kelvy children. It's such a fascinating study in terms of uh, social class but also um, property distance, boundaries, access, um, not having access, uh, redlining, and all of that, all of those things that go along with um, um, societal social class distinction and all of that. Fascinating portrayal, really well written. So I highly recommend The Doll's House. And finally, at number one, uh, the top short story of Catherine Mansfield's that I highly, highly recommend is, of course, The Garden Party. Would you believe we've come full circle to the story I first read in high school? And I know it's in some ways a sort of typical classic choice, but it really is there for a reason. It deserves the praise that it gets. And The Garden Party is the story, um, it's a sort of coming of age of a character of a girl called Laura Sheridan and her family is planning to have a garden party. And the day's preparations in Sue, um, she's getting ready for the garden party and she is sent down to talk to some workmen um, on where to put a marquee and there's conversations about the band and the flowers and what's going to be served and all of that. And um, so Laura goes down to talk to the workmen and there's a little bit of sexual tension in that because she's not a child anymore. She's starting to come of age and one of the workmen is sort of eyeing her. Uh, during the course of the day's preparations um, where we see Laura and her family and their privilege and their sort of um, insulation from the rest of society, in the midst of all of that, drops something happening. And in this case, this, the monkey wrench that's thrown into the story to make something happen in the plot is the death of a character called Mr. Scott. And he is a working class neighbor. And so um, as the story progresses, Laura uh, experiences what you'll find in many of Catherine Mansfield's stories, and that is an epiphany. An epiphany is quite popular at this time in literature. You'll find it in the works of James Joyce, D.H. Lawrence, who Mansfield knew, Virginia Woolf, and many others. And uh, the epiphany is this, um, it's a key aspect of modernist writing, actually. It's some sort of 
moment at which even if we don't have a full understanding of what the human condition is or of what life is about um, and it's not completely well formed there's some sort of sense of some greater purpose or some greater meaning to life and you're sort of seeing it all happening at once and I think one of the things that is really interesting is that um, Catherine Mansfield's modernist style often um, she writes like this um, she's using a sort of internal um, narrative of a character as does Virginia Woolf to describe events around her and how everything is all happening at once everything everywhere all at once right um, so you've got waves or wind or trees or the sound of birds or someone is looking at a Van Gogh painting and at the same time they're listening to a brilliant piece of music by Brahms um, and at the same time they're hearing a robin um, and out of the corner of their eye they're seeing someone that they haven't seen in years and everything is sort of all lumped in together all happening at once um, so I find the garden party to be just a really brilliant evocation of epiphany and coming of age in the character of Laura Sheridan. Well, there you have it. Five of my favorite Catherine Mansfield short stories. I do hope you'll check them out. Again, I'm providing them in the comments below. And um, as well, do check out stories by Catherine Mansfield and the Montana stories by Catherine Mansfield from Persephone Books. And I'm going to get outside now and take a walk. I hope you'll get out and enjoy your day as well. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.